John 8, 1 through 11. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and placing her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such. What do you say about her? This they said to test him, that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, Let he who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. And once more he bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away, one by one, beginning with the eldest. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus looked up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and do not sin again. We are taught to love the sinner and hate the sin. God loves all his children equally, no matter how good or bad they may be. None of us is without sin, and therefore none of us are perfect. A good Christian is not one who sees themselves as morally superior to their peers, but rather one who is humble enough to acknowledge their own sin while doing everything in their power to help their neighbors as well as themselves turn away from sin and back towards God. As a society today, we are often quick to condemn people for their past, acting as if redemption doesn't exist. The concept of cancel culture, or ostracizing someone based on something they said or did in the past, goes against everything we have been taught as Christians. Any person, no matter how great the crime, can turn their life around if they repent for their sins, speaking with their mouth and believing in their heart. It is no secret that society has largely turned from God in recent years. As easy as it is to let our anger with sin turn into hate for the sinner, we must remember that as Christians we are called to be Christ-like. Even Jesus at times expressed anger, notably during the cleansing of the temple in Jerusalem, which was overtaken by merchants and money changers. Jesus, while overturning tables and rebuking the sin these people had committed, never had any hate in his heart towards them. Even in his final moments, he forgave the Roman soldiers carrying out his crucifixion, proclaiming to God, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. How can we expect to change the minds and hearts of those towards which we have contempt and hate? It is only through our love and care that we may convince these sinners to return to God. Many of us are also currently dealing with our own sins, and sometimes that hate we have for our sin is turned on ourselves. It's not being perfect that makes a good Christian, but having imperfections and also striving to improve. Through loss and through life, things will happen that welcome sin into our life. It can get to the point that self-hatred and the lack of control you have over yourself makes you want to give up. You may find yourself at the lowest point where getting better seems impossible. Nothing displays this better than the parable of the lost son. Luke 15, 11 through 32. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am, starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father, and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. 
But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Redemption is possible for everyone and anyone. Because God loves us all, all of us are capable of overcoming whatever vice or evil is in our life. God's love is more powerful than hate and can work miracles in our lives. All we must do is humble ourselves, like the prodigal son, and give ourselves up completely to God as the son did to his father. Right now, a lot of us are both the elder and the younger son without realizing it. Whether it be the act of canceling someone, or a Christian allowing their hate for sin to turn to hate for the sinner, both act as the elder son. Seeing themselves as superior to their younger brother, the elder allows hate into his heart and jealousy for his brother returning to the father, returning to God. At the same time, we are also the younger, sinners who have turned from God, finding our path back home. Like the prodigal son, God's love is so great that no matter what we have done, he will always welcome us back to him in the end. Overcoming these vices and overcoming sin as a whole is something you will most probably spend your whole life doing. We are all constantly in a state of improvement and there will also be some imperfection within us. This shouldn't be cause for despair, but rather seen as an opportunity to gain unique perspectives on the different struggles many of us will go through as we live our life. Overcoming a certain sin successfully gives you the unique perspective necessary to help another person get through it. You are worth it, and through God you will succeed. You will fall, you will suffer greatly, but you will prevail. Next time you fall, remember this. Get up, but don't ever give up. This is the Warrior Philosopher, building the foundations of the Warrior Philosophy.